I would like to show you how to communicate or how to set up the float blocking detection, for example. And for this, we have a demonstration model here. Let's first have a look on the general setup. We do have an H250M40 device uh, where I can move the float manually in order to simulate a measurement signal, but I can also fix the float in order to simulate a blocked float. There is a 4 to 20 milliamp output and sensor module in the H250M40, which is connected to a milliamp indicator, 17.8 milliamp output at the moment. In addition, there is a digital output in the meter, which is notifying this light. So if there is a diagnostic available, the digital outputs will switch the light from green to red. And we have a hard communi communication with a hard modem going to a tablet. And here I have already started the DTM um, of the corresponding device. And so at the moment, the float blocking detection or the diagnostics are switched off. So this would be the factory setting, how we deliver the device to you, because there shouldn't be any messages that you've never seen before. And you can now using the DTM, for example, to set up these diagnostic functions. There is a new menu entry with a new um, software, which is called Any 100 Diagnostics. You know? So this entry only appears if the sensor module has or is supporting these new diagnostics. You can use the same DTM also for previous meters, which have not the diagnostic functions, but then you will not see this additional entry in the menu structure. Now, so just by uh, hooking up the meter to the DTM, you will see if it is already available in your device or not. We have introduced this about two years ago. And the first thing we can do is add parameters to enable one of the diagnostic functions. So the first one is the blocked flow detection. I will enable it. I'll write it down to the device. And so now I have enabled the float blocking detection with a certain parameter set. In this case, we have a monitoring period of 30 seconds in order not to wait too long, but the monitoring period can be adjusted from one second to one day. The longer the period, the more reliable, of course, the detection becomes, but also the reaction time is increasing then. So here, after 30 seconds monitoring time, there should be a signal that the float is blocked because it's no longer moved at the moment. And then, probably the digital output will change the light of the lamp. The hard communication will tell us that the float is blocked. And on the milliamp output, we see that also the current output is driven to fail high. Yeah. So we see the red lamp. It was switched by the digital output. We see the indicator is indicating high. So the milliamp output at the moment is 21 milliamp yeah, because it has driven the output to the maximum. Um, Yes. Yeah. And if we look on the device status of the meter, we see that the device status is a failure, blocked float. So also via heart, this information is, is transmitted. As soon as I touch the float or move it a little bit, then you see already it has detected that the float is still moving. So the blockage is no longer present and the light has switched to green again. Yeah, so I just have to move it a little bit or just touch the float and then it's able to detect whether there is a float blocked or not. The event can be mapped to different stati, as I told you. It can be used as failure and then the output will be driven to fail high. But you can also, if you want to keep the, um, the current signal, change the mapping of the diagnostics. So I go to event status mapping yeah, and here I will look for the blocked float. Oops, where is it? Sorry. Um, no, uh, oh, it's difficult with the key here. There, there it, I, I just saw it. Blocked float here. Yeah, at the moment it's mapped as failure, but I can change it to let's say maintenance required send to device, yes. And then the current output will no longer be driven to fail high or fail low, but you see we have again our 17.8 milliamp. So we can continue with the measurement and with the process in case it would be a false alarm. Yeah, so my preferred solution would be to keep the measurement signal, 
but to use a digital output in order to indicate to the DCS system or just locally with a lamp or a signal horn that there might be an issue on the device and that somebody looks after the device. <clears throat> For the parameter setting of the float blocking, you see there is the monitoring period, 30 seconds, but we also have to adjust the so-called tolerance threshold. Basically, this is the noise which is present. Um, there is a good pre-setting from best practice um, um, uh, tests that we have made, but there's also a chance that you measure the noise of your process. And for this, you can go to auto calibration, blocked float, I will start it. Yeah, and so now the device is measuring the noise which is present and after at least one monitoring period. So here in this case, I have to wait for 30 seconds. If the monitoring period uh, would be one hour, I should wait for one hour while the process is continuing to run. And then I will get the uh, a parameter which is best used or best uh, um, uh, suitable for your process. Uh, while I'm doing the auto calibration, the device status changes to a function check. Yeah, because now at the moment it is measuring, yes, but in the background there is a function check uh, evaluated. So the device status, status doesn't say it's everything is okay, but it has changed to function check. So now I can stop the calibration and we can see if the noise has been recorded. Now for this I go to parameters and now I upload the parameter from the device to the DTM. Yeah, so it was 0.2% previously and it has detected or measured a noise oh, of 0.06 only. Yeah, so because it's a very calm indication and it's not uh, really an industrial environment here, here the noise is only 0.06%. So and then you can take this parameter for using your float blocking detection. Finally, I would like to show you another application diagnostics. So I will enable the pulsating flow, download to device, wait a second until the hard command has been received. Okay. So I told you that in gas applications, it may happen that the float bumps up and down. Yeah. I will simulate this just by yeah, bumping the float up and down. And also this should be detected by the application diagnostics. And you see that the light has switched, uh, switched to red. So this is another application diagnostics. Yeah. On the binary output, output, we have a consolidated alarm. Yeah, so we cannot distinguish now whether it is a blocked float or whether it is a pulsating flow. But at least we know that there is an application issue and then either by hard communication, we can read out the issue to see it or by looking on the display, we can also see whether it is a blocked float or an oscillation. But when I'm already uh, in front of the meter, I probably see it with my eyes, what's, what's going on. Mm -hmm.